Hey guys, my name is Octoman and this is part 20 of my turn-based battle system tutorial. And in this part we gonna take care of the perform list again, because um, if you may have noticed, when you're going to attack maybe a hero with one enemy which is going to die and the second hero already has the same target, well, we would actually, yeah, attack a dead enemy which is basically not what we want. We want the hero which ever has the same target um, to attack another target so it won't attack um, a dead enemy. So how can we do that? Basically we have to do the same stuff for the enemy state machine and the hero state machine and since we already have a for loop in here where we are taking care of the attacker's game object and make care, uh, sure that we are deleting the hero turn from the perform list or the, the enemy's handle turn from the perform list so we can use that for loop and of course take care of that the, the attacker's target. Okay, so what we have to do in here is we have to take care of that as the same way as we have done with the handle turn delete basically or remove. What we do is we say if a bsm dot perform list uh, in square brackets i dot attacker's target is going to be equal to this dot game object. So we basically do the same as we already have done over here. Oh, let me zoom in a bit. So I can see this one better. So um, we take the attacker's target and check if this is a game object which was or is the attacker's target in any handle turn inside. And when it is so, then we want to change the attacker's target to any random target. So what we do is we say bsm dot perform list again in square brackets i dot attacker's target so we set this one so we type it's going to be equal to bsm and since we are on the hero state machine we say bsm dot heroes in battle and then again square brackets and what we do is we change this one to a random hero in the list in, in the heroes in battle list and how can we do that we say random dot range and the random number is going to be between zero and the maximum hero amount in, or hero in list amount which is heroes or no it is bsm dot heroes in battle dot count. So dot count is going to be the maximum amount we have in that heroes in battle list. Okay, and of course we close the line over there. Okay, um, since this is going to uh, create a small problem, uh, we need to mm, yeah, put all of that stuff once again into another if statement, because we want to make sure that there is anything in the perform list. So what we say is if bsm dot heroes in battle is going to be uh, uh, heroes in battle dot count of course is greater than zero. So if there is anything or if there is any hero in battle uh, then only then do all of that stuff. So if bsm dot heroes in battle dot count is going to be greater than zero then do the for loop and while we are in the for loop check for the attacker's game object and the attacker's target. Okay, don't forget to save and now we do the same for the enemy state machine. So we go down to our uh, turn state that once again. Uh, yeah, in hero state machine it was also the turn state that if I wasn't explaining that very well. So again in the turn state that of the enemy state machine we do the same stuff. So we say if bsm dot performers, basically I could just go over and copy paste that stuff and i dot attackers target like this if this is going to be the same as this dot game object then we want to make sure that we choose another attackers target or basically another target so we set bsm dot perform list 
Whoops. Perform list I dot attackers target. And we set this one. Um, in this case, it's going to be the enemy. So we say BSM dot enemies in battle. And again, we choose a random number in square brackets. Can also close a line already in here. And what we want to do is we want to have a random dot range. Random dot range. And in there we say between zero and again, BSM dot uh, enemies and battle dot count like this we already ended the line and of course again we need to pu uh, push all of that information into an if statement so only if bsm uh, enemies and battle dot count is going to be greater than zero only then do the for loop and only then do all the other things. Okay, that's it for the programming stuff today. And in the next uh, minutes, I would say we start to create a small world or town or I don't know, area where we can do all of that stuff. Also, let's recheck um, if everything is working. So we are able to uh, attack the same enemies with boss heroes right now. I'm going to try to kill enemy 2 at first. And since the second hero I want to enter the same enemy while we are still in the input turn or perform action, uh, then this shouldn't attack the second enemy afterwards. So let's see. As you can see, it automatically updated... Um, it automatically updated the performance handle turn and attack the second enemy and we don't got any errors in here and that's what i wanted to yeah to cover at first okay don't forget to save everything and let's start to build a small scene where we can later on or basically in the next tutorial can work around with so go over and create a new scene what i want to do is since my uh yeah my game in here is somehow just uh, in 2D mode instead of 3D mode. I'm gonna change this later on. Uh, what I want to do is I want a plane and the plane does not need to be much or big. I don't know. What I also need is a light, a directional light with somewhere shining. Okay, we also have a camera which is currently for me autographic. I need to change this one to perspective. And I'm gonna reset the position of the plane pretty quick. So reset position. And I should be able to see this one day. I'm gonna reset the position of the directional light too. And place this, I don't know, anywhere. Okay, so here's our camera. It has no ankle or anything, so we may rotate. It's going to be the x-axis, it seems. Uh, yep. Okay, and then move this a bit up so I can see my plane in here for the moment. Later on, we don't care about all of that stuff. Okay, so I will go over, well, 45 is a bit big. Let's take it to 30 maybe. Okay, so I now will go over and create a small town. That means I just take cubes and spheres and stuff and all the other interesting things we need to trigger battles or trigger other states basically instead of just a battle state and that will be again part of the next series or next part um yeah video okay so what i do is i create some cubes in here three by three by three i'm gonna give that a color uh let's see if i have any material oh yeah yellow, yellow is good so I'm gonna change this one to yellow. Also, I go over and create a new material. You don't need to do all of that stuff. It's just for the prototy prototyping purposes, as you may remember, as I said in the very beginning. Okay, let's find a nice ground color, maybe this one. I'm gonna rename the material to brown and choose the ground in here. This one needs to have a height of 0 0.5 or basically the position of 0 uh, 1.5, I mean. 
So and now I drag this around maybe to this point. And this can be just a house maybe. Or anything else. Okay, then I go over and create another cube. UI 3D object cube. This is going to be at the height of 0.5 at the position. And I change this one to green and gonna drag this over here. And I make sure that the collider is going to be a trigger, so later on I can trigger something like going in the house and going outside the house, and I don't have a hard collision. And of course I make sure that this is called maybe door. This can be called whatever you like. And I make sure that I um, yeah make it part of the house, so it's the children of the house I just created. So now I duplicate the house and can just turn this Okay, to minus 90 then. And I'm gonna drag this somewhere over here, I don't know. This can be everything later on too. Uh, this is just, a, again, a prototyping setup for all the stuff we need to think about later on. Okay, and then I have maybe a field which I need to trigger later on to get out of the town if I am currently in a town. And that's going to be another 3D object cube. And I'm gonna reset this one to zero. I'm gonna place this somewhere here on the town and so on. I'm gonna scale this up a bit. Position doesn't really matter, but yeah, make it as accurate and stuff as you like. Okay, so what we have in here, we gonna do that too. This is also a trigger only. And later on we don't see that areas. And of course another one might be some uh, yeah, stuff around. Gonna go to the top view. Let's see if I can do that. And like this. In autographic mode it's sometimes a bit easier to handle all those things. I want to make sure that this is at 0 0.5 in the height. And now I can scale this one to 10. And I can uh, place this one over here. Then I go over and create another cube. Uh, this is a wall in this case. And now I can duplicate this or again create another cube. So, oh no, not an empty game object. 3D object, cube. And in this case, again, 0 0.5, and the position can be at first here. What I need to do is I need to scale factor of 12, but in the z-axis. I believe it have to be 12. Oh, no, 11 is more than enough. Okay, and then I can place this one over here as another wall. I don't know. The position needs to be 5.5 .5, I believe. Okay, and then I duplicate this one once again by pressing Ctrl D and place this on the other side. So when I go or would go with my um, with my hero through the town, then I have the possibility to collide with this door or basically trigger this door, trigger this door or trigger that zone. And that zone would basically bring us to a, um, to the world. Uh, so outside anyhow. And in the world we can set up the same kind of regions where we can enter battles, which is um, yeah, the main purpose we are after. But I want to show you something different, or a, a bit more in here. Um, so let me just create an empty game object. Uh, I'm gonna call this one maybe town. And I want to make sure that I reset town to 000. zero, zero. Oops. And after that I can make all of those objects, like the walls and stuff, children of the town, so I can easily um, open and close this one up and I don't have any problems um, yeah, with that stuff. And this is going to be our uh, world, I don't know, 
World Changer. I you can call this one whatever you want, it doesn't really matter. Later on we will script wise change a lot of stuff in here. Okay, I go back to the top view once again. What I want to create more in here is another uh, game object. In this case I'm going to use a cylinder and this cylinder will represent um, our spawn points. Since we have to leave or enter specific areas of the playfield or in the in the worlds or towns, then we need spawn points um, where our hero character needs to be spawned later on. Uh, let's see how small I want to scale this one. Well, that was a wrong scale. Gonna need to scale this. Our sp yeah, that's pretty much okay. All the spawn points don't need any collisions or any other stuff. We just need the positions. Oh. We just need the positions so we can get rid of the capsule collider on this, um, yeah, on this on this game object or on this cylinder. And I'm gonna turn this one to blue, maybe, so we see some differences. And since this spawn point will be the spawn point when we enter the town. So at this position our hero will be spawned. If you want that to be spawned at any other place, then yeah, just choose another area. Then I go over and duplicate this once again. And what I also want to make sure is that I don't hit any other collider. Not with that spawn point, nor anything else. And gonna duplicate this once again for the other house. This is again just for the prototyping stuff, so that you know what you have to do when you are planning such things, when you are entering a building or anything else or coming out of it, then you need to spawn somewhere or have a fixed position. And this position is later on going to get saved depending on what, um, uh, what collision has happened. And then we will save that position where where that spawn point is or we just I don't know we will see that later on maybe uh, since it's not really part of the battle no, or turn based battle system but yeah and it, for the world we will basically do the same when we are outside in the world then we need a spawn point to come back and this is what we are going to save and later on okay so um, with that done, we have a set up a small town. So make sure you're going to save the scene as a new scene. You can call it whatever you want. Maybe town one. I yeah call this one town one, and just save this. Okay, that's basically a setup for whatever you want. You can also set up a battlefield or an area with, which have some regions for spawning stuff or basically for um, yeah, getting some battles uh, or encounter regions basically. But I will go over all that encounter regions later on in the next tutorial, I believe. Um, since we have to do a lot of stuff for entering and leaving the battle later on, but yeah, for now, this should be pretty much everything I wanted to cover. So we have everything set up we basically needed to. Um, and the next sessions, of course, will be way more code heavy as this one. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you like that video series, you have, of course, the possibility to donate, so check the description, there will be everything you need to know. And yeah, thumbs this video up if it was helpful in any way. So, see you in the next tutorial, bye bye.